What's up everybody? Welcome back for another video. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about the current dietary guidelines for Americans that are set for the year 2020 to 2025. So the, the scary thing is, is these are the recommendations that are currently out there. Um, and before I dive into some of this stuff, I, uh, I want to, I want to first say, I don't, I don't mean to be super judgmental and there, there certainly are some good recommendations in here, but there are some scary things in here that are still recommended that is honestly really sad. Um, and again, in previous videos, we talked about how, you know, big food and big pharma really drive these dietary guidelines. They, they can't have their products not being bought at stores. And that's why things like low fat dairy and grains and things like that and are still pushed to be part of a healthy diet when in reality they make us pretty sick. So I'm just going to dive into some of this stuff today um, and just show you some of the highlights here. Uh, we're not going to go through all 164 pages. But as you can see, this is the current USDA guidelines for 2020 to 2025. And I'm going to skip to some pages here. So first, let's go to page 12. If I can get it to work. Maybe. There we go. Okay. So a couple things I'd like to point out here. Focusing on these food groups. Vegetables, great. Fruits, great. Grains. I mean, those don't need to be part of a healthy diet. Dairy, including fat-free, which is not the way to go. Full fat is. Yogurt and cheese and lactose-free versions. Fortify with soy, um, no, and yogurt as alternative. So, again, there's still some pretty poor things in here. And then oils, including vegetable oils and oils and foods such as seafood and nuts. Vegetable oils are rancid seed oils. Please don't consume those. Like, again, why are these still in the recommendations? And then furthermore down here, limiting these certain foods. And, and added sugar, saturated fat, sodium, and limit alcoholic beverages. So I can get on board with added sugars. Yes, we need to limit sugar, um, you know, all the time, especially added sugars. But saturated fat, less than 10% of calories per day starting at age two. These fats are needed for our bodies. They make up our cells, the cell walls. They help with brain function. I mean, the, the essential fatty acids that are found in saturated fats are so important. And the problem is, is, it's the hydrogenated oils and these fats that are found in processed foods that are hurting us. We need saturated fats from butters, lard, from uh, red meat, um, you name it. We need those fats. And then sodium, limiting sodium. We do not need to limit sodium. Sodium is an essential nutrient. The reason why they want you to limit sodium is because so much garbage is found in these high sodium processed foods like um, like lunch meats and all these boxed crackers and garbage that are in the aisles. Those are full of sodium, yes, but they're also full of other things. And that's what you need to be watching out for. Um, it's not the sodium itself. Having a salty piece of fish and some vegetables and things like that, pickles, mustard, that stuff's not going to hurt you. Your body can excrete an enormous amount of salt. Your kidneys can get rid of eight ton of salt and you'll stop eating salt when you've had enough the problem becomes when you're short on salt your body can't make salt but it can get rid of it very easily so when you're low on salt your body goes into like a, basically a freak out mode and become um, inflamed and things like that so um, again just these things that you can't believe they're still on the recommended guidelines for 2020 to 2025 so let's skip ahead again here Five. Again, just an infographic that you can't believe is still in some of these guidelines. We're talking about nutrient-dense foods, trying to get people to eat more nutrient-dense foods, which again, yes, you want to be eating nutrient-dense foods like salmon, meats, vegetables, things that are nutrient-dense, not necessarily calorie-dense, like peanut butters or candy. Those are really, really energy-dense, but very low nutrient. Okay, so... Look at what they're recommending here. Switching frosted flakes for plain shredded wheat. Okay, 
Like we need to be harder on people. Like, no, not shredded wheat. That's horrible. That's still basically sugar. Plain low fat yogurt with fruit. All right. So when it's low fat, you take all the nutrients out of the yogurt. Okay. Fruit is just basically sugar. Again, not horrible, but really low sodium black beans. Um, no, like let's just have regular black beans. We don't need to have low sodium black beans. Okay. Vegetable oil. Again, butter is way better. Way better. Um, vegetable oils are, are, are will cause an inflammatory storm inside of your body. So again, just unbelievable that this is actually in the guidelines. You know, and this is just proof. It's proof that the things I'm saying aren't a joke. Um, look at oils. Oils are important to consider as part of a healthy dietary pattern as they provide essential fatty acids. True. Commonly consumed oils such as canola, corn, olive, peanut, safflower, soybean, and sunflower oils. I, I mean... The fact that it says strategies to shift intake, including cooking with vegetable oils in place of fats, high in saturated fat, including butter, shortening lard, and coconut oil. That's what you want to cook with. You want to cook with butter, coconut oil, avocado oil, shortening lard. Get rid of the vegetable oils, please. Please. Again, this just drives me nuts. And then, you know, scrolling down even here, looking at beverages. Look, they want you to drink water, sure. Okay, but then they continue to say, or that contribute beneficial nutrients such as fat-free or low-fat milk. No, full-fat milk. But even then, you don't need to be drinking milk to get calcium. You can get more calcium from green vegetables than you do from milk. And if you're going to drink milk, it should probably be of the goat variety or, um, you know, coconut milk. Uh, and then 100% juice. They're recommending 100% juice. Okay, the juice in the store is straight-up sugar. I mean, if you, I mean, maybe if you you know, squeeze an orange and drink the juice, but even then you're void of the fiber because you're not getting the actual pulp, okay? So just, again, unbelievable. So let's skip ahead here. We're, we're kind of running long. I didn't want this to be too long of a video. I just wanted to highlight some things here. So again, saturated fat, they go in a long discord. I won't read the whole thing about limiting saturated fats. You do not want to limit saturated fats. You want to limit added sugars, which when combined with saturated fats can cause issues. It's not the saturated fats that cause the issues. It's what you eat with the saturated fats. You don't want lean, low-fat meats. All the nutrients and things like that are found within the fatty tissue. I mean, not launching into a long discord, but the organ meats and things like that are actually where all the nutrients are found, okay? Not the muscle meat. So then when you limit the fat in the muscle meat, then you're basically you know, limiting a ton of the nutrients that can be found within the meat. Uh, and then last but not least, again, just looking at sodium. Again, telling people to limit sodium, which is just a horrible recommendation. Um, there's a book out there called The Salt Fix. Um, don't quote me on the, the author, um, but it, he launches into the whole, it took, the whole book talks about how, you know, salt is wrongly demonized and it should really be sugar. Um, and that salt actually... Um, people who are limited on salt have many more health problems. Um, so again, that's all I really have for you. I mean, this is a 164 page document, but those are some of the highlights just showing how there's still a huge disconnect from what's actually healthy to what's recommended. And, um, uh, you know, again, do I think that their intentions are nefarious? Do I think they're actually trying to make you unhealthy? Maybe not, but the fact that Big pharma and big food still have this much of a sway um, is very scary because, as you can see, a lot of these recommendations are 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 not not quality. Um, again, until next time, I hope you enjoyed this a uh, little bit longer video. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, um, and I can you know I dive a little deeper or provide some sources and some some things for you to read if if you don't maybe quite agree with things that I'm saying. All right, until next time, peace.